Feeling right? <laughs> you know, um, I I was just thinking there's so much to, to thank God for, and um, you know, I thank God I'm born again in this in this house in 1980, and for close to 38 years, I'm so blessed to have been able to be mentored and to be discipled by so many ones, but most of our Pastor Seward. And I was just thinking, you know, um, you know, Pastor, you know, the whole thing that concerns Pastor Seward is it's always about discipleship of nation, discipleship of all generations. And uh, you know, and, and I, I see too, you know, what is uh, what's so important for Pastor is always uh, about about Christian development program. And I just reflected, you know, and I said, yeah, Pastor taught me to ensure I go for my classes that I grow and uh, equip me. And uh, you know, he, has, he he personally developed me when. When I, when I needed correction, he was there to correct me. When I needed affirmation, he was there to affirm me. And uh, he guided me in so many things. And, but, but the ministry involvement is one thing I really appreciate the pastor. You know, he, he so often, you know, believes so much in me that I, I always think, I don't think I can do it, but he says, and you can, you know. And I want to thank the Lord that how, you know, when I think I was just a six months old Christian, you know, he, he I was shortlisted to go for training as a watchman. And then from there, all forms of leadership, and then in the missions, and he keep growing in. And I find it so privileged. I don't know why he likes to send me everywhere, you know? <laughs> uh, and, but, um, but I always ask, I say, Pastor, you sure I can do it? And I, in particular, one, one, one particular assignment that I thought was very difficult. And then he says, Sandy, I heard God. I say, Pastor, as long as you have heard God, and he says, Sandy, I know you can do it. And I say, okay, that's all I need. But then he told me the next day, he said, Sandy, it's going to be two weeks of this. I said, wow. It's nearly impossible, right? But we did it. You know, it's history now. And, uh, and it's true. Whatever he, he hears of God. And I've learned so much about submission, about obedience. And, uh, and, and I, just, I just keep growing in this house. And I'm so thankful, you know. If you know the Sandy of 1980, I was not here then, but I'm very good now, you know. <laughs> but seriously, I wasn't a very confident person. But now, I think I'm overconfident, you know. <laughs> seriously, the faith, the confidence, the leadership, and I'm just so thankful. This is what Pastor Silva has, has impacted me so much. And, but but I, I particularly have caught something from, from Pastor in 2007, 2008, when he started teaching us and sharing with us about what the Lord spoke to him about church farming movement. It just caught my spirit, you know. And I said, God, this is a strategy for multiplication. As a missions director, I said, God, I want to see this implemented in my churches. And I caught it, I've been learning. And, and pastor sent me to Timor Leste. I struggled, you know. And but he's, and and when I was there, I realized, yeah, this is the place. And again, he would tell me, say, I told you, I'm always right, you know. <laughs> I said, yes, pastor, I'm right again. But I just want to thank you. That is something that, that is so precious to me. I've seen the hand of the Lord, and and He taught me, you know, like you know, when you give your gifts to God, you know, and God will plant us at the right time. And when we learn in obedience, how God can just grow. And I, and I just want to thank the Lord for, for the, the movement that I've seen. And, uh, but on, you know, on a personal note, you know, I, I grew up in a single uh, parent family and I never had a model of a father, but Pastor Seward was like a father to me. And you know, just a few days, I think on the 21st of March, you know, before, uh, you, know, I, you know, we share a folder on, on Timo last day, we share a folder on uh, 414, and I saw him, he updated the file, which means Timo Leste, church planning movement, and the 414 generations were upon his heart. And I, and I think the only way that we could honor our, our spiritual father is continue to do what he believes in. Amen. Discipleship of all nations and discipleship of all, all generations. And I'm so blessed to have received uh, so much from Pastor Siwa from this house. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you. We're going to uh, take back the time here in Tampanese and hear from Pastor Ransford Obeng, uh, John Vierhoff, as well as uh, Dr. Betta. Yeah, you can come, it's fine. Uh, <laughs> Pastor Ransford, Pastor of our church in Kamasi, Ghana, uh, powerful church, as well as his regional director for West Africa. Is that right? Yes. Um, my association with uh, uh, Pastor Rick way back in 1984 when I came to Pakai Institute. And then, uh, at that time, uh, CCC Calvary Charismatic Center was in the New World, in the Dome. And uh, they were having about four to five services. And one of the services I attended, God spoke to me and said, I want you to go back to Ghana. The reason why I brought you here 
is that I want you to go back to Ghana and do the same thing this man is doing. So I left, and then after one year in 1985, we started CCC. And then we wrote to Pastor Rick, and uh, his father was the uh, mission director at the time. He sent four people to come to uh, Ghana to be with me, four missionaries. And then after six months, they left. I did not hear anything about Pastor Rick until five years later on. <laughs> then, then five years later on, those days it was not fax, it was telex. He sent me a telex, he said, I want you to come to Singapore. And then I came to Singapore and he said, look, God said I should mentor different, different people and I want you to be part of them. And uh, since 1992, we've been meeting three times in a year. And the last uh, three, four years, when I became RMD, it, it increased to four times in a, in a year. And that's how we share. And his lifestyle and passion for mission have really had an impact over my life. In fact, before I met him, uh, I, I always wear tie and suit. But since I met Pastor Rick, I put down the tie and the jacket. <laughs> And, and all out for Jesus. And, you know, uh, the last three, four years when he started with this church planting, up to that time, we had only few churches. But he pushed us. And today, in Ghana, we have 600 churches. Wow. In and we, are, we are still planting. We are still planting. And one of the things that I said, you know, the last... Uh, R&D meeting we had that was uh, February he made all of us set our own goals so as I was sitting down I said I set the goal so there's nothing I can do he's sitting in heaven and he said you set the goal you must get it done <laughs> so we are going to continue uh, the church planting and I thank God for his life so much his lifestyle boy, I'm telling you, down to earth he will do things that he will not do for himself, do it for you. And as, he, as all of us have said, he believes so much in us. And he said, Ransford, you can do it. Go ahead. And I thank God for pastoring. I can focus on and strengths that I've seen in him, but I just want to focus on one area which really stood out to me, particularly as I first began to know him, and that was that he had an amazing ability to recognize gifts in other people. And, and that, that really amazed me. I, I thought, how on earth uh, you know, is he able to see and recognize gifts? And actually, I was going to get him to speak on that subject at our conference a couple of weeks ago, so we missed that one. But anyway, you know, I remember once he, he, he chose somebody for a particular role, and, and I thought, does he really know what he's doing? You know, he, I, didn't, I couldn't see what he was seeing. But over a period of time, it was right. You know, that person had the gifts that they needed to fulfill that role that they were performing. And, and then I began to see that over and over again, many times over, where he chose people. And one of the things that I recognized about him was that he was a mobilizer of people. And I think that's because he saw the gifts of people, and, the, and of course, he, it was this great vision that he's imparted to us, and he couldn't do it himself. But God gave him that, that gift and the ability to see the gifts of people. And then, of course, he, when he gave us a portion of your responsibility for a portion of that vision, you know, he was trusting in us. And I think he saw those gifts and those abilities and he then he could say, like Pastor Sandy said, you know, you can do it. And, you know, and he, he instilled confidence in us. And I know there are many people who've said how Pastor believed in them. And I think that's because he could see the gifts that God has placed in people. And uh, so today, you know, just, I just want to acknowledge that and thank God for the life 
and a legacy of Pastor Rick. He's really impacted my life, and I just thank God for him. Amen. Pastor John uh, pastors in Auckland. He's our R&D for also the Pacific. And we want to welcome uh, over here at Tampanese, Dr. Beda, who's pastor uh, at Beza International Church in uh, Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. Would you give him a hand? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I did not know Pastor Rick for many years, as many of you. We made some time, it's going to be about 11 years. And uh, I was a bit frustrated because uh, I traveled all over the world and my responsibilities in the continent of Africa exposed me to some uh, frustrating issues. We have a very thriving church, thriving congregation. Africa, I mean, it's, it's a worship center. Uh, we love to worship, we love to engage people with the gospel, but always we are affected by our policy makers, our leaders, who carry Sunday morning the Bible with them to church, but Monday through Saturday is all forgotten. So we've really been frustrated with this issue. And we come together uh, as, as people, as church leaders, we talk about our denominations. Hardly I hear kingdom issues, kingdom agendas, kingdom vision. So there's a friend that I knew who uh, heard or used to hear my passion and or I would rather say frustration. He says, I really wanted to meet one person. So it took a long time. I did not know Rick Seward. I resigned from the organization where I was working in June, and I was in Chicago. Bob Houlihan calls me and says, would you like to meet with Rick Seward? I said, sure I would. So he called Rick, he was in Hawaii. He flew from Hawaii to Los Angeles. I flew from Chicago to Los Angeles. We just met one hour, and that was it. It was a blending, many of vision a relationship, a commitment, something that my spirit was has hungry for. And I said, my brother, I mean, you, you know him. You know him, how passionate he is. And, and probably next to my family, no one has gone closer to my skin like Rick Seward did. And uh, respectful, but very straightforward. Uh, loyal, but very instructive. Uh, demanding but very sacrificial. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, you can put everything together in Rick Seward and you find a fine gentleman of God. So I told him, my desire, and we told, you know, you know his passion, the moment he was church planting, church planting. I said, now I have another need I see in the continent of Africa. We need to touch the upper echelon of society. Those are the policy makers. Those are the ones that are frustrating the commoners down on the streets of the continent. I said, great, I hadn't seen that. He, that is his honesty. I saw it, but I know how to work. Let's work start it together. So we did. That was 10 years ago. And uh, in November, we met in August for one hour at the airport. We prayed together. What can I tell you? It was a relationship made in heaven. Mm. So I went back. He came in November. <laughs> and we started to plan. I can't tell you what that relationship has done today in the continent, but much more so in the she says, I have been carrying this vision of bringing nations together into this country called Ethiopia. Because I believe God has shown me I've been carrying this out of this nation. Something will come as a light to the nation. I said, that's also my burden. So we joined hands. <sighs> we love one another. You know, I would say to you, a relationship gives you ministry. Ministry doesn't give you a relationship. So I'm ever indebted for the relationship I established 
with him and we started. And uh, we started with Beza. We started 12 years ago, 10 years ago, with 12 people. And now we have over 3,000 people coming together without watching it. Not only that, if you come Sunday morning, it is a mini United Nations. <laughs> we have over 50 different nationalities coming together. We have 70 to 20 ambassadors attending church service. Government ministers. So we have now the opportunity and we're just planning together in January. Now I say, the auditorium is about to be finished. We'd have to complete it quickly. Now it's time now. All the wisdom that God has put in your life to touch nations, but through leadership, the time has come. So we plan the next trip. I was to bring the ambassadors and the leaders and he was to give us a three days training. I didn't expect to come here and to find out, but now it is you. You better, you better think about that. It's, it's a pretty thing important. So now, here we are, uh, uh, amazingly touching nations. Nations where what we call Africa arise every year. We invite nations, key leaders from across Africa. The, the, evangel the Christian leaders meet here, the diplomats meet here to plan for the Heads of State Summit. We plan of how we're going to take over Africa with the gospel. And then at the end, Sunday morning before the Heads of State Summit starts, we bring the Heads of States and the church leaders together for prayer breakfast. Hallelujah. We pray and preach. You'll be there. You know what? You all will be there. It has been a fabulous vision fulfilled. This last year, you know what? This last year, we had 16, 67 nations from all over the world to attend Africa Life. And people came as far from Taiwan. Pastor, this was a dream that he had and we had together. And I, I, uh, the, the, the thing has just started. I want to say this Jeremy if I want to, just once. You know, the disciples, uh, that is a very sweet relationship with Jesus. Right? Very sweet. And all of a sudden he disappeared. What did they do? They regrouped and made sure that the vision that he started was completed. This is a challenge for all of us. It's no time to retreat. It's no time to go back. We have to go full force and make sure that the dream and the passion and the vision that was in Rick Stewart and that has also been imparted into us will explode all over the world and the kingdom of our God shall be the ruler of the kingdom of this world. Uh, we want to hear now, uh, really from someone that's so special to this house and dear to us. We're so honored to have with us at this time, uh, Pastor Ray Belfield, who's not a stranger to BFC. Uh, he oversees all of our regional missions directors for quite a number of years. Uh, he's a, a great man of God, a true apostle and father in the faith. Was a great blessing to this house for so many years and still is. I know nobody as encouraging as him. And uh, we count it a great honor, Pastor Ray, that you're here tonight. And we just want to hear from him for a moment. We're going to shoot you from here, uh, but everyone's going to be able to see you. Rick Seward, has influenced my life more than any other single man that I've met in, eight, in my, my 88th year. And just fantastic, the relationship. He sat in the a chair in my room with Sister Diane and he he put, brought a computer an apple and he he worked for an hour and a half putting all the stuff on it was just amazing his abilities but you know he didn't stop there he he um, when, when he came from London drove up in a snowstorm and drove back again 
The trouble was they couldn't get through the snow, and so he slept in the car. That's the kind of guy that we can all do with. You know, when I think there's no other single man that's ever influenced my life in my 88th year than Rick Seward. He absolutely took me and Sister Diane with him. It was just amazing. He came every time, about every six months, he came to see me at the house. Wouldn't let me go, chatting with me, talking with me, encouraging. Just amazing. So I thank God for Rick Seward. Thank God for Rick. He did so many blessed things for us. And you know, we go up to, Af to America and he come back with little gifts for the, for the RMDs. Sometimes they were big things, sometimes they were small things. But they always came back with something. And you know, that was Rick. Kindness, love, care. Yes, he could be tough. And all leaders, the, the leaders, have got to be tough. But you know, he had compassion and love and care and feeling. He did. And I just thank God for Pastor Rick. And my wife thanks God for Pastor Rick and this is Diane. Praise God. Thank God for them. Oh, you are all the future. I'm the past. You are the future. Go for it with all your might. Give it everything you've got. Because if you will, you'll be like the leader that we just uh, said sure you ought to. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll make sure that the RMO remind me to give a gift to all the RMDs before they leave. Or I'm RMDs you get a gift before you go. Uh, uh, just, just one other person that I think we've, we don't, didn't mention over this period of time, uh, we did pray for him. And it's, uh, I want to honor Brother Shane Kamiski. Yes. Uh, you know, uh, Conferences, uh, travel the nations of the world, and uh, I don't know, you carry his bag and Bible, and all this, you know, stay with him. And you know, Shane did so much, especially during this time. Shane stayed back in uh, Brazil to help sort out things and uh, to prepare for the body to uh, return to Singapore, and all the documents he showed us, you know, 30, 40 you know, things that he has to do, and uh, embassies and different departments that go through. There's so much work on you. Shane, we appreciate you. church in many years ago and I uh, just want you both to know that you guys will always be part of this family. We are family. We love you both. I'm just going to ask uh, some of the uh, RMDs who are here to come and help me surround them, pray for them to refresh them. Thank you uh, Susan for releasing Shane travel around the world and uh, not having him around many times. Pass it, uh, clean and cool, you just leave me here. Father, we thank you, Lord, for both Shane and Susan, Lord God. Thank you that he was a true armor bearer, Lord, to Pastor Seward, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for his sacrifice and, and just being willing to go wherever he was sent, Lord. Thank you, Father, for, Lord, the many ways in which he has lifted up the hands of Pastor Rick, Father, and, and reaching the nations of the world, Father. And Lord, even at the end of his of his uh, Pastor Rick's life, he was there, Father. He was there, Lord, the, to minister with him, Lord God, and, and Lord, even to help bring him back to, to Singapore, Father. And 
Lord, we pray, Father, for your refreshing upon both of them, Lord God. We pray, Father, that you will just, Lord, just minister and pour back, Lord, into them, Lord God, what they have poured out, Lord, all these years, Father, in ministry, Lord, to the men of God that you have, Lord, called him to be with, Lord. And we thank you, Father. So, Lord, tonight we bless them. Lord, we pray that you refresh them. And that, Lord, you'll help them to transition to a new season, Father. Transition, Father, into new, into your plans and future for their life, God. And we thank you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Isn't it wonderful to hear what God's doing in the nations? And, uh, you know, I felt this. I, I actually wasn't supposed to do this uh, part of the service uh, tonight. And so as I was sitting there before we entered in, I, I really felt the Holy Spirit just quicken in me that I believe God wants to release something uh, into the nations tonight. And I felt like how appropriate after all they shared, you know, uh, with, with um, my dad going home to be with the Lord. Uh, everybody's trying to figure out, you know, what's next. Uh, I know Dr. Bet is uh, mostly serious, maybe just a little joking. He's pointing at me. I was thinking it was you that was next, but he was pointing at me. I, I thought maybe Arthur, but I think it was me. Um, and uh, everyone keeps pointing at me, but you know, I, I think the reality is I think all of heaven is pointing at every single one of us. And, and I, I want to say this, I want us to pray tonight. Uh, we're going to hear the word in a moment. I feel like there's something prophetic in the atmosphere. You are here uh, on purpose. You are here in a moment that's divine. The Bible says if we agree on anything, it would be done. There's just something about when believers get together and we agree in prayer. The Bible says they were all gathered in one place, in one accord, and there came a sound on that day like a rushing wind that is still echoing in the nations today. And I just have faith to believe that there could come tonight a sound out of this place that would move into the nations in a greater way than ever before. Uh, and, and you know, it's a big deal, uh, losing my father, but I, I wanna say this uh, because it's sometimes hard to, uh, this isn't about me as a son trying to make you feel bad for me. You know, it wasn't my, just my father, he was my pastor. And I believe so much what the Bible says that unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground, it, it doesn't bear any fruit, but if it falls to the ground and dies, it bears much fruit. And I believe his life that was sown, not just in Singapore, but the nations, is going to bear more fruit than ever before. And tonight, as you hear the sound and the call of the nations, I want us to, I want us to rise up tonight. Would you stand to your feet at VFC? Come on, as a, as a missions church, as a church for the nation, I want you to grab the hand of somebody next to you tonight. We're going to pray for a release uh, of anointing, of harvest in the nations for a greater release of missionaries, of churches planted. Some of you, as you pray tonight, some of you, as you pray, the anointing is going to fall upon you. For some of you tonight, you're praying, and God's going to send workers into the harvest. There's coming vision, provision, availability, more structure, buildings, ideas. Can we begin to pray tonight? Father, do it more. Do it greater. Let there be a greater release into every nation of the world tonight. Come on, lift up your voice and just begin to pray.
Thank you for your time.